Good morning, Trinity. We are very thankful for your presence here today, and uh, we'll get started here momentarily. We're very thankful that uh, I told the funeral folks yesterday that God's check-in for heaven was a whole lot easier to get through than coming to Trinity this weekend with the, with the run. So, Andrews, could you turn me down a bit? We'd like to welcome each of you here this morning to Trinity, and we're hoping and praying that God will speak to your heart and your minds this day, and we welcome you into his presence. And those who are joining us by way of online, we welcome you as well. For those in the choir loft, welcome. Please take a moment out of your time right with us now. There's a blue card in the pew in front of you, and we'd like to have you fill that out. And we'd like to have you hand that to the usher at the appropriate time when they come through. Give us that information, and if you're a first-time visitor with us, or if you're a member here, we'd like to have you fill that out. But for those who are a first-time visitor, we're going to send you a brief note and thank you for your presence. If you're interested in giving today to Trinity, you can do so electronically as well. You can scan the QR code in the bulletin or text to the following number, 407-809-1560. No, that is not my bank account. <laughs> if you're in need of a prayer, following the service, an elder will meet you over here in the side chapel area, and we will be available to pray with you at that time. If there's any special needs that you have, you can speak also with Pastor Eduardo or myself. The next Fellowship of Christian Athletes Trinity Youth Ministry is, will be held today, February 4th, and the sign-up information can also be found in the weekly. Volunteers are needed for Touch a Truck. We'd like to ask you to please consider helping for part or all of the morning. To sign up, please use the sign-up sheet in the back in the narthex, and there are still some tags on the giving tree as well. Please consider supporting this event, and for additional information, you can also see the weekly or contact Terry Boggs. Lent is almost here, and we'd like to ask you to please consider joining us for our Ash Wednesday service beginning this Wednesday, and that will be at 12.10 and at 7 p.m. in the evening. Next Wednesday, the 14th, excuse me, yes, that'll be Valentine's Day. And uh, you can come and celebrate Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day, both of which really will revolve around the theme of love. Also, the following weeks of, East, of uh, Lent, up until Holy Week, there will be Wednesday services at 12.10, and seven each week. We hope to see you there. There's additional information in the weekly and we hope you'll be able to be there for that as well. And if you have any questions, as always, please contact the church office. I'd like to have you now stand and greet one another with a handshake of warmth and welcome. So they love me with you, my brother. Thank you. She didn't have one for me last week. I was so <laughs> mad. No, no, she does not say that. Correct thing is to say it. You've got plenty of warning, right? <laughs> I'll try to get one. I do have at least one. Let's have a start with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.
If we say we had no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all our righteousness. Let us then confess our sin to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you and thought word and deed by what we had done and by what we had left undone. We had not loved you with our whole heart. We had not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgive you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, and from all our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of, of the whole world, and for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, O gracious Lord. This is the feast, the feast of victory of our God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O oh, oh Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith that remain. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we live and reign with you in the Holy Spirit. One God now and forever. Amen. Please may be seated. The first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you, have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? 
It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and make the rulers of earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these, he who brings out the host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Today's epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel, for if I do this in, of my own will, I have a reward, but not of my own will, I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That is my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as to not make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize, so that you may obtain it? Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Immediately Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at the sundown, they brought to him all who, who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the, and the whole city was gathered together at that door. And he healed many who were sick by various, various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, 
he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him, searching for him, and they found him and said to him, everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, let us go to the next towns that I may preach there also, for that is what I came out. And then, and he went through all Galilee, throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please, you, maybe sit. Grace, mercy, and peace be richly and abundantly poured out upon you this day. Our text is taken from 
gospel lesson, Mark chapter 1. If you're following along in your pew Bible or online uh, with your phones or up here on the text, it's Matthew, Mark 1, 29 through 39. I found it really interesting to note that many of our uh, readings this morning had talked about the run, the, those who are running will not grow weak and he will sustain us. And I thought, boy, that would have been a wonderful prayer for us to have at 5 o'clock this morning out here as the runners took off again. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it seemed like it was quite an ordeal to, to navigate some of the traffic. We're glad to see you here tonight and today uh, throughout this weekend. So God's blessings to us as we worship the Lord and Savior. After Jesus left the synagogue with James and John, two of his new disciples, they went to Simon and Andrew's home. There were four of, these were four of Jesus' new disciples who had left their fishing nets from last week, we remember that, and they left immediately to follow Jesus and become fishers of men. In last week's teaching, we also heard about Jesus teaching in the synagogues and that he was one who taught and healed and had great authority. Now Simon's mother-in-law, Peter's mother-in-law, the Simon Peter, was the one who was now sick and lying in bed with a fever. They told Jesus about her right away. The picture of who Jesus was was shaping up in their minds as well. Jesus could help, and he became the one who could help Simon's mother-in-law. She had a high fever, high enough to call the master to summons her and for Jesus to come to their home. I ask, do you and I go to our Lord and our Savior at the time of the sickness of one of our children? Or do we go at a time of trouble in our family, a time of some sickness or suffering or situation? Do we first go to the Lord and turn to him? I would encourage you to do so and to see the help that you and I have available to us. It's kind of a 911 God. Please help. And when you and I see that powerful and power in prayer, we will not want to deviate from it. I was told by Desiree, um, now she always gets scared when she hears her name mentioned, and Brendan's usually good about pointing that out. You picked on your wife again. So this is when she was a child, in her childhood, uh, in high school, I think it was, that you and some of your friends, I believe it was from the church youth group, went to the cemetery. And in the cemetery, under the cover of darkness, I don't know what you're doing there, but <laughs> you lost your contact lens. And under the moonlight, and somebody had a match. In those days, most people carried them, especially in Wyoming. And by the, that single match and moonlight, there was a glimmer of something shining in the grass where she had been. After praying, they found that which they were looking for. It's a story that I share because there's many times that we're thinking and looking for things that we can't find. I don't know what your custom is, but I pray. And it's become one of my first lines of uh, whatever when somebody says, do you know where my whatever is, my phone or whatever the keys are? If we've been looking, we need to pray if we haven't found it yet. And so I share that with you. I also share another story of prayer and the importance of prayer, and it was Personally, in our life, Desiree and I were married, and we were in the last year of our seminary training, and uh, we'd gotten married. We now had a baby on Vicarage, and we decided because of Vicarage we needed a different car, only to have completed that final year of Vicarage, the, and in that eighth year of complete training, we found that our budget was $125.40 a month short. Yeah, that was kind of what my stomach did too, Jim. It kind of grumbled. We didn't know. We didn't have an answer. 
And we said, we're going to pray about this and we're going to ask God to help us because there's going to be something was going to have to change. We were $125.40 short every month. There was just no foreseeable way to do it. Well, we prayed. And the week that we were going to have to make that final decision before I wrote the letter that is going to be sent to the seminary saying we're sorry, but we're going to have to postpone or perhaps drop. We received another letter in the mail from our home church in Guthrie Center, Iowa, Emanuel Lutheran Church. And it says, Dear Doug, in this your final year of seminary, Pastor Goodsman and the leadership of the Trinity Lutheran, or of, excuse me, Emmanuel Lutheran Church would like to extend to you a gift of $125 each and every month in this your final year of seminary training. Please accept this as a gift from your home church. What do you think we felt? God is good. Now somehow, just somehow, we scraped up 40 cents every month. But I want to share that with you because sometimes things are so big that big changes are, we're thinking are going to have to take place in our life that we just need to turn to the Lord and bigger things start to take shape. Answers that are so huge to us. God gives us another way. And I share that with you because, and there's others I could share, but as I look out amongst the congregation, I have experienced with these years of ministry here at Trinity how God has touched your life too. How he's reached out and given you answers to prayer that you didn't know where you were going to go, what the answer was. But as you and I start to realize, we also realize that there's sometimes debts that we just can't pay. We don't have enough resources to ever make payment for it. That's how it is when I look at my Savior and I see the size of my sins and I see the shortcomings of my life. And as you examine yours, the same could be said. That I, as I confessed and you confessed, I'm a poor and miserable sinner and cannot save myself. But we together turn to our Lord and our Savior Jesus, confessing our sins and asking that he would pay for them as he's promised. And today I have that good news for you that each and every one of your sins have been forgiven in the name and by the power and by the blood of Jesus Christ. Shed for you on Calvary's cross, given to you as a free gift of God's grace, paid for in the powerful and rich blood of Jesus. As we look at this gospel lesson in this story, it makes me think of Simon Peter who says to, it's just like Simon says, hey Jesus, you know my mom, my mother-in-law? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to have you come over to my house. You and all the other disciples, my, mom, my mother-in-law is sick. She's had a high fever. Would you just mind showing up? She'll make us lunch afterwards. <laughs> Some reason that just never quite seems right. But I think we miss part of the story. And that story is this. That she had a high fever. And you know what high fevers do to us? They weaken us. And even if the fever leaves, we're still not well right away. We just don't feel well. And I won't use another word to describe that for those of you who are wondering what was said at the 9 o'clock service, David. <laughs> so as a result, we just don't feel well. But look at what happens. Jesus takes her by hand and he kind of raises her up in the bed and the fever leaves her at the command of Christ. And when you and I start to see what happened, what did she do in response? She, she felt well enough to get up. And she felt strong enough to get up. And she then went and she served Jesus and the disciples who were in her home. I'd like to offer this as a reason. 
Jesus, who had caused that fever to leave, had restored her to such a degree that she was restored by her Savior. She was no longer sick, but she now wanted, she was moved, compelled to get up and to serve her guest. Most of all, her Lord and her Savior, Jesus. She was so thankful and for the privilege that now she had to be able to serve her Lord and her Savior. We, too, are privileged people. Privileged people to be called by God himself into this fellowship of believers and to be able to serve him using our God-given gifts and time and talents and treasures. To be called into the service of Christ to the capacity you've been appointed. I personally am privileged and honored to be your pastor. You are God's children, and I serve at the calling and command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in a call that was extended to you or by you to me, and I have been appointed to this task. Luke put it in this way, the apostle and a disciple of Jesus, the great the physician. My life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by my Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news. Acts 20, verse 24. Each of us have been given a gift of the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, and it is for the purpose of building up the body of Christ. There's not one person who's here today that doesn't have a calling of God upon their life with a gift that they've been given to use. That evening after sunset, many sick and demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. In fact, the whole town gathered, we are told, at the doorway to watch and to see what was going on. And so Jesus healed many who were sick and with various diseases and cast out many demons. But because of the demons knew who he was, he did not allow them to speak. You may be saying, but why would Jesus not want them to point out who he was? Jesus' fame was starting to spread. In fact, it was very, very much spreading. But what they were saying, he commands the sick. He removes the demons. But you see, Jesus was much more than a, some faith healer who could heal sick people and demon-possessed. He silenced them so that the people would see him for who he was and who he is, their Lord and their Savior. He was the Messiah, not just some miracle worker. His message was much deeper. He was the Son of God. And his message was about the kingdom of God's love and forgiveness, of how God was going to make peace between God and man, removing the sins of man, who are staining the souls of all people of the earth who would ever breathe, and how this Jesus would become the spotless Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world, casting them into the depths of the sea, separating them from you and from me as far as the east is from the west. This Jesus had a deeper message. It was about the kingdom of God, and how we have peace with God through this spotless Lamb of God. It is His blood that sets us free and offers you and me forgiveness. Now some of you may ask the question, how do I know my sins are forgiven? Number one, Jesus said so. If you believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Jesus, who says in Luke, go therefore and preach for preach forgiveness and proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins in my name. Jesus rose from death to life having suffered the penalty of our sins but was raised by God on the third day. You and I can be certain 
that if we believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your sins, my sins, are forgiven. Jesus left that scene of all those people in the home. And before daybreak, the next morning, he got up and he went to an isolated place and he went to pray. I hope that's part of your faith pattern as well. That you and your Father, your Heavenly Father, go to a place and go pray. Talking with your Heavenly Father on a regular basis hopefully daily. And in the Gospels, throughout the Gospels, we see in Jesus that was his common practice in the desert as he was tempted by the devil, in the wilderness, in the garden, from the cross. In our text, later, Simon Peter and the others went out to find Jesus. And when they found him, they said, Everyone is looking for you, Jesus. But Jesus replied, we must go to other towns as well, and I will preach to them too. That is why I came. So he traveled throughout the region of Galilee, preaching and teaching the kingdom of God, knowing that that was why he had come. As you and I think about the ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church and School, a church that is now over 100 years old. We, we, we can recall the history that tells of how many messages were proclaimed pointing people to Jesus and to heaven itself. How the forgiveness of sins was proclaimed from here as well as in the baptismal waters of God's grace. And how at this communion rail we will receive the body and blood of Christ and we will be again assured today of the forgiveness of all of our sins. We can go across this campus and can celebrate that we have not just sat on that message and kept it to ourselves, but rather we see that we have an opportunity to share the gospel message with all those who will come onto this campus. Over 340 will be coming this year, plus their parents, plus their other siblings. And we have the opportunity through our Child Development Center to teach them, to tell them, and to train them up in the ways of the Lord. We are reaching out into this community and all the surrounding towns. We also have an opportunity as we add additional staffing here at our church to conduct and to carry out this ministry of church and school to reach even more people. And when I start to think about the population that surrounds us here, one of the demographics is that there are a lot of people who are Spanish, nearly 20%. And when we start to look beyond those demographics, we also see there's a large block of singles. And we look at another demographic, one of the largest and growing, is those who are reaching or are surpassing going into retirement. In many respects, we are perfectly poised to go to other towns and villages teaching and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ in very meaningful ways to a lot of people who we don't know yet, but who are truly our brothers and sisters. And my prayer is that the Lord will lead us to them and them to us. May we be readied to go to these other places and to share the same message of Christ, that the kingdom of God is near for them and for us to repent of our sins and to believe in the good news. That is why we have heard Jesus calling us into his service, as he did the disciples, saying, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, Keep your hearts and your minds in the true faith in Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we join together in making this common confession of our faith. Let us boldly proclaim our faith using the word of the Apostle Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, making of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. In the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and see at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all play, at all times and all places give a thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord for what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him, being found in the substance of the mortal nature, you have manifest the fullness of your glory. Therefore, we angels and archangel, and we all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those who you created and sent your only begotten Son to our flesh to bear our sins and be our Savior. We repent and joy. We receive the salvation accomplished for us by all the all availing, availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on, on the cross. Gather in the name of the remember, gather in the name, remembrance of Jesus. We beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids up doing in his own testament. Gather us, we pray, for the end of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the Mary's feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which, uh, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayer, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, the congregation lifts up the following prayers to you. Please pray for Musu. Send family love and healing as they lost their father and husband this past weekend. Pray for Karen for continued improvement with her health. We also pray for Kristen for healing and wisdom for the doctor to decide on the best course of treatment. We also pray for Jim for healing from skin grafts and protection from infection. We will pray for Touch Truck for the upcoming event this next Saturday here at Trinity that it will touch many people in the city and bring them to your uh, faith as well as support Trinity's mission. Pray for Mark in Austin, Texas, 10 years old and has been diagnosed with inoperable brain cancer for the healing power and comfort of your Lord. Pray for the family and friends of John who passed away last night. And uh, last, we pray for Tom and Tina. Happy 56th anniversary, Mom and Dad. Lord, in your mercy. As we are a stranger in, pil in pilgrim on earth, help us by true faith and godly life to prepare for the world to come and doing the work that you have given us to do while we, while it is the day before the night comes when no one can work. And when we, our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us in your heavenly kingdom. Heavenly Father, have compassion for all those who are broken in health or broken in spirit. Heal the sick and break the chain of the bondage of all of those who are bound to their vice or to uh, their additions. We also include those we mentioned before you in the prayer card and those that we hold in our heart and our mind in this moment of silence. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, 
he broke it and gave it to the disciple and say, take any, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Please may be seated.
the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. We give you thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen and through us through the saying in faith, tower you and in fervent love tower one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve to the Lord with joy. Thank you, God. You all have a wonderful week. You too. <laughs>